So it was roughly six months ago that I actually quit my corporate insurance job. Jared, I'm here to tell you that I'm quitting. In order to give myself the freedom and flexibility to focus on my farm full time. Let loose the goose! So now I know a lot of folks are wondering, six months later, how are you doing? How has that transition been? And was it everything you could have ever hoped it would be? Oh, hello little gooselings. Good to see you guys. I got a surprise for you this morning. You're gonna get to eat all the plants that are out here. Come on, you know you're gonna love them. Somehow Ron Swanson snuck in here as well and she's digging in. Yeah, I've been carefully cultivating some of this. This is uh, actually amaranth seedlings. So you see here, I'll help with a little bit of grass. They will devastate this whole thing by the end of this video. But yeah, let's face it, lots of people have been talking about quitting their jobs. That's it, I'm done with Superstore, I quit! The Great Resignation has probably been one of the biggest news stories of the last 12 months. It's being called the Great Resignation. According to a new Labor Department report, 4.3 million people quit in August. A record number of Americans are telling their bosses, I quit. And as for this job, well... I quit. Even though now people are talking about the oncoming Great Recession. And so I figured I'd give you one guy's just kind of quick, honest take on what I've learned since I quit my job. Both the good and the bad. Release the Kraken! That is such a great way to start your day. Go on dogs, let's go check on the cattle. Toby loves checking on the cattle. Abby's starting to turn on to it. Still not 100% there. Let's also check on the chickens while we're out here. Good morning, my little egg producers. How are you all? Good to see everybody. Looks like we already got some eggs for the morning. I actually forgot to pick my eggs up yesterday. This automatic coop door, which I think was like about a hundred bucks, was 100% worth the investment. I recommend it for anybody who's ever thinking about doing a good coop. Eh, looks like I can probably use some fresh water. We'll have to get some in a minute for them. First, let's check on the cattle. I can already hear them bellowing. They love their fresh grass. Come on, Abby, we're checking on the cattle. So for those of you guys who are not familiar with my story, six years ago now, I was working this corporate job in the investment industry. Wasn't really happy with where my life was going, living in Washington, D.C. So I decided to make a big change. So my wife and I, we bought a farm here in Northern Vermont, 160 acres. It had been abandoned for about six, seven years. Before that, it was an organic vegetable farm. Before that, it was like a vacation home. Before that, it was a working dairy farm for about 100 years. And for a couple of years, we did the back and forth thing between DC and Vermont. We used a lot of our savings to fix up the house. I ended up planting this 600 tree permaculture orchard that you see here. But quite honestly, it's hard to start a farm when you're living 500 miles away. And and so in 2017, my wife moved up here full time and she went back to school to be a nurse practitioner. In 2018, I actually found a job up here where I was taking like a career step back and I'd actually be making about half as much money as I was making in my Washington DC job. But taking this new job at an insurance company here in Vermont would allow me the chance to actually be able to live on the farm full time and get the farm started. And so in 2018, I moved up here full time. You know, I started making videos on the regular to document our progress and, and create a market for our products when we had products to sell from the farm. I got my first flock of about 40 ducks and started raising them for eggs. And then things have grown significantly over the last couple of years. But it wasn't until January of 2022 that I finally said, you know what, that's it. I'm done working some sort of day job so that I can make the farm my hobby and passion. What I want to do is go full time with the farm. And while last year we only made about $7,500 uh, from farming activities, because of all the social media content, we do. I was actually generating more money from the farm and the social media activities of the farm, enough so that I could actually just quit my day job and focus on this full time. And so that's what I've been doing for the last six months. And I will admit, overall, it's been pretty dang awesome. Uh-oh. Did you look at this? All my calves escaped. Yeah, they keep slipping underneath the fence. I'm not too worried about it because I think that pretty soon they're going to grow out of that. But parents are staying where they need to. It's the kids that are running away. Of course, you can hear the parents bellowing for fresh pasture. So let's go help them out. Come on, Abby. I know you're still a little bit afraid of this. Nope, she's a little too scared still. <laughs> what I found is Abby will hang out right around here while Toby and I do the cow chores each morning. Toby is an old pro when it comes to visiting the cattle at this point. Hey, Audrey one. Hey, Kurt Cobain. They've been doing good with eating this grass down, but they haven't decimated it. This is what the untouched grass looks like. This is a day of grazing. Let's disconnect our fence. 
the, yeah, the calves can duck underneath that line, like right there. And so they get like a little pre-jump on the food compared to their parents. How's it going, Ariel? You good? You're looking nice there, Annabelle. For those that have been concerned, our happy cowmobile is holding up pretty well. I was in a little bit of a rush yesterday and I didn't get enough time to set up my next day's grazing. But it's okay, it only takes me about five minutes. You know, one of the biggest myths I would tell myself when I was working my day job, plus the farm job, plus doing everything else, was that I would have all this time in the world and I wouldn't be in such a dang rush. But one thing I have found is that that is a myth. My to-do list has never stopped expanding and I always do feel like there's more stuff I should be doing. Not that that's a bad thing, I think it's just I'm a very ambitious person who has a lot of goals and things he wants to accomplish. And so because of that, I'm always adding things to my to-do list. Isn't that right, Kurt? Audrey, I heard you yelling. Do you look at how they're like all lined up at like the starting line here? And by the way, that's not to say that I haven't figured out a way to slow down and stop and smell the roses a little bit because quite honestly, the best part about quitting my day job has been having the ability to do just that. I don't think I'm nearly as productive as I was say 12 months ago when I effectively had three different jobs. All right, yeah, come on, fresh faster. Come and get it. Like even right now, I don't think I would have ever had the time to like stop and smell the roses or stop and watch the cattle eat grass and chew the fat with you guys like I do right now. On what I believe is a Thursday that I'm recording this video. It's just such a beautiful luxury to have the time and not feel like I'm in a total rush as I take care of my animals and work on the farm. I'm not rushing to be back inside the house to be on a Zoom meeting. I think another thing that, that happened that I don't think I quite talked about much when I quit my job back in January is for the last two years, I've been basically working from home here on the farm. But a lot of companies, including the one I was working for, starting to make the push to get employees back in the office. And the office that I worked in was about an hour away, so I couldn't feasibly see how I would do all of this plus all of this and still do that. So admittedly, there was actually some necessity to quitting as well. <laughs> would you guys look at the happy cowmobile? Look how much fur is coming up from the highlands on these brushes. I think this is working out well. You know, a couple of folks have actually said, why don't you put the brushes up higher? Or why do you have them tilted at weird angles? The reason is I actually do it to avoid tipping. So if I had a brush up here, number one, they'd put more force on this and potentially break it. But then number two, particularly if like I'm downhill like this, if I've got a cow pushing hard from right here. I could easily see them tipping it from up here. When it's down low like this, they're not gonna tip it. That's where my strength, my stability, you know, it's completely locked in place with these two by 12s, I've got multiple bracing in place here. That helps me a lot. And look inside the mineral feeder. <laughs> One thing I've noticed is Toby has loved snacking on the cattle hair. Let's move our happy cowmobile to fresher pasture. I have noticed the trend that where the happy cowmobile is I tend to have more manure built up. It's not too hard to move. I can come in with the ATV and move it when I gotta move it further. I know one question a lot of folks have for me when I talk about leaving my job just to focus on the full time has been how have I made the money side of things work? And well, honestly, that's been fine. Nothing too crazy to report on that front to be quite truthful. My wife and I, we are pretty financially conservative folks to begin with. We have no debt, we have no children, we live in the middle of nowhere. So honestly, life is just not that expensive for us. And we're not like saddled with mortgage payments or that sort of thing. And like I said, the social media stuff actually does help me earn a pretty decent living just in and of itself. I mean, we've had to be thoughtful in how we manage our expenses and the things we do and don't do. But overall, because we essentially had a business already up and running with a lot of the things we do with the farm and social media content, it wasn't like we had the ramp up time that some folks have when they start a new business. I was able to earn a living from day one of being unemployed, or I guess I should say self-employed. And that self-employment has given me the chance to focus on other things as well. You know, I had the dream of starting a beef jerky company, which unfortunately I've had to put on hold because I've hit all sorts of snags from a processing standpoint. I have pushed ahead with my soap making company and you'll actually start to see the first Goldshaw Farm soap come available on like October, November. It's gonna be beef tallow soap made from cows from our farm, as well as from some of the local farms we have in our area. There's gonna be initially six different scents that I offer. 
There's gonna be the Toby, the Abby, the Pablo, the Lil, the Ginny, and the Molly. Each one's gonna have a different scent that I guess I'll say matches the scent and personality of each of those animals. I've been testing and making batches and all sorts of stuff like that, and I think it's gonna work out pretty well. There we go, so we have a grazing paddock for tomorrow now too. See, it's one of those things where I can get ahead of the game. Now, because I wasn't rushing in. Hey, Abby, you wanna come under her? Come on, come on, Abs. You get, oh, yeah, she's learning, she's figuring it out. Good job, girl. You guys do your good work here. How's it going, Jimi Hendrix? Hey, Belinda. <laughs> Calves are getting big. Of course, that said, I somehow managed to get my pants covered in cow crap as I was moving the happy cow mobile. I think I'm gonna have to like set myself up a chain so I can use it to move it. So I'm not having to like push on the bar. Because what happens is you poop on this bar and then when I grab the bar, it's covered in poop. <sighs> but I guess that's a farmer occupational hazard that I just gotta live with. Oh, I can't forget to set up their wheel blocks so it doesn't roll when they rub on it. These also get covered in poop, which, I don't know, I wish I had a better solution. Probably actually upgrade to real wheel blocks soon. Abby, don't eat the cow caca. Come on. Ugh, yeah. Can you lick my face with that mouth? Alongside the soap, I've also actually completed writing a book. No information yet available on the publishing plans, but a children's book about my livestock guardian dog, Toby, and his first few months here as a puppy, and the battles that he does with coyotes and skunks and raccoons and bobcats. That will be available eventually. And not having to work my day job really allowed me to focus in and finish that book off, which had been lingering for close to two years. All right, now, Abby, this is back on, so you gotta be careful. Come on. That's a smart girl, good girl. Water trough's doing okay, but I could top them off so the calves can get access. But all that said, in terms of progress on new business ventures, I've also made some good progress around the farm here. Been cleaning things up. We are actually in the process of getting ready to build a new barn. I have started the process of fencing the upper pasture, which probably is a whole video unto itself. I built new farm infrastructure, like the happy cow mobile and the mobile chicken coop. I have a couple of other new things I've been working on and designing as well. I've been taking care of the permaculture orchard. I'm just looking at this mulberry tree. Look at this thing. I think it's about high time that I pull off the tree tube and let this one go natural. That one there, this one here, and this one here. This tree's been growing here since, uh, gosh, 2017, I guess. And I think it's finally due to go free. Unfortunately, because it's been growing on this tree for so long, there's no salvaging the tree tube. I just have to cut it right off. I just wanna be careful I don't cut the tree itself and injure it while I'm liberating it. What do you think, Abby? I think we're gonna get some mulberries this year. There we go. Got a little bit of a lean to it. There's a bee's nest that tried to form in here at some point, or wasp nest actually, it feels like a paper wasp. I think I actually might wanna put the stake back in and let it try to grow up a little straighter. It's been very selectively grown to grow up. You know, mulberries can grow out very quickly, but by forcing the growth upward over the last couple of years with that tree tube, I'm gonna have a nice high mulberry tree versus a mulberry shrub. If I look closely, I believe those are gonna start to turn into mulberries themselves. And so if I can beat the birds to them, I'll be able to pick my own mulberries out here. And yeah, we got our first free mulberry tree out here. What do you think, Abby? Pretty cool, huh? I swear it's so rewarding to me to see these trees growing up and growing out the way they have been. This was really my first project here on the farm. They've gone slow, it's been slow growth. I've been using the Mark Shepard STUN method, which stands for Strategic Total Utter Neglect. It's where you kind of carefully plan out a mixture of tree crops. You let the tree crops get into the ground, let them do their thing. The ones that fail, fail. The ones that thrive, you double down on and grow on. And I mean, if you can look out here, right? Some of them have done exactly that. You got this amazing mulberry tree that's almost, I don't know, 13, 14 feet tall. And you got this nice little apple tree that's slowly developing. You got this black locust that's doing okay. Completely dead mulberry tree, which I should probably replace with something else. Probably what I'll end up doing is taking the cuttings from that mulberry tree, putting them over here and having new seed stock. As you go up and down this orchard that I have, which is a mixture of chestnuts, mulberry, 
apple, black locust. Those are probably the four main ones, but also certain things like butternut and walnut and still have some elderberry mixed in here. Like they all have been growing at their own paces, doing their own thing. Some of them have been more successful than others. You know, for me, the biggest shift with quitting my job has been the fact that I can go at my own pace and I'm not always running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And I have been more thoughtful. I have been prioritizing things like taking care of myself personally more, taking care of my animals better, and just really enjoying life here on the farm. Where, you know, in the past, I was always in such a rush to achieve one goal after another after another. I don't think I was really enjoying and appreciating life quite the same way I am now. Isn't that right, Abby Dabby Doo? Look at this apple tree. It's an apple tree that is taller than me. I'm very excited about it. It's doing well. Cattle do some damage to these trees. I try to do my best to keep them away. But when those little calves escape, that's that's where the problems start to happen. But all in all, you know, it's okay. I'm not too worried about it. You know, the goal of this orchard isn't for it to be this thriving commercial enterprise. It's to have essentially a food forest that supports a whole wide variety of life, whether it's supporting me or my wife, whether it's supporting our livestock, whether it's supporting the wildlife, even if it's just supporting the soil, like having that diversity that we have out there as well as kind of what's sprung up is, is that's that's the ultimate goal. I know Toby Dog, the grass still hasn't quite grown in where the flooding happens. I'm gonna come up with a new solution for out here. Hey Pablo Barncat, are you checking on the bees? By the way guys, limited time, you can still get your Pablo Barncat t-shirts. They are available. We're taking orders for another week or so and then we're gonna have to cut it all off. If you want one of these sharp Pablo Escobar shirts, click the link down below. Some happy honeybees. Good. It's kind of cold this morning. I know you can never tell because I'm always sweating, but it's like 38 degrees when I got out here. Now the sun's come up. It should be up, up to like 75 today. Come on, Abby Dabby. Let's go check on the goslings. How are my geese doing? Are you guys coping with not being parents? I'm sorry I had to break up the party. It was just necessary. Would you look at Abby? Toby never went swimming. He never goes swimming. Abby loves to wade into the pond as deep as she can go. It's pretty much right about there. <laughs> And yes, I'm aware about my poor pond performance and the water levels. I think I'm gonna have to totally rethink that whole setup. Hey, little gooselings, how you doing in there? In the span of about 30 minutes, you have pretty much decimated what took me three weeks to grow. I'm not gonna keep them in that for very much longer. Pretty soon, they will start to free range. I might actually enlist their help to do a little lawn mowing here. As they're about, gosh, what, three, three and a half weeks old now? When they hit the five week mark, that's usually when they start to like go completely free and start to, you know, become integrated with the rest of the goose flock. And by eight weeks, they're like adults. What are you doing in here, girl? Are you sitting on a nest? Oh, she's been laying a couple of eggs. I know I'm asking for trouble with this, but maybe I will let her sit on that nest in there. Well, I gotta get up and moving and get up to the top of the pasture and continue my fencing work so I can have more grazing space for more cattle. But until then, I will say, I really have enjoyed these past six months. It has been enlightening. It has been very uh, rejuvenating. And I'm looking forward to where the future of the farm goes from here.